What's going on y'all, it's TKJ, welcome back to the channel, appreciate you for stopping by man, today I'm doing a realistic rebuild of the Boston Celtics who nearly came back from down 3 to nothing to the Miami Heat in the Eastern Conference Finals, but still lost in 7 games. The goal here is to win a championship within the first 3 seasons, if I can't do it during that time, then the video won't end until eventually I do. Make sure to leave a like and subscribe if you haven't man, we just hit a thousand subs on this channel, now we're starting the road to 2k, so if y'all could help me out with that, I would really appreciate it, but without any further ado, it's time to get into this video. Let's get it. So the Celtics have been knocking on the door of winning a championship for a while now. They've gotten to at least the Eastern Conference Finals in three of the past four seasons. Obviously made the NBA Finals last year, but they still haven't been able to get it done, man. So that's what we're here to do today. Let's take a look at the rotation where we actually have a lot to work with. Obviously, I mean, this is a good Boston Celtics team. We're just trying to make them elite. That's essentially all we're doing in this video. At the one, we got Marcus Smart, who is the heart and soul of this team, 29 years old. Got him locked up for the next three seasons after this year. The stats don't fully show his impact, but you guys obviously know he got defensive player of the year last season took a little bit of a step back defensively this year but still was one of the better defending guards in the league i definitely want to upgrade our backcourt in some way during this video but i don't think there's any scenario where i trade marcus smart just because he seems like a boston lifer man i really like the fit here i think again he's the heart and soul of this team so he's probably going to be sticking around unless i get really desperate which hopefully that doesn't happen at the two we got Jalen brown and this is really the big dilemma man because i could very easily just ignore the elephant in the room which is that i don't think Jalen brown's gonna be on this team for very much longer if i ignore that man i could bring Jalen brown back i could sign some rotational pieces and we could definitely win a championship pretty easily i think but for those who follow my content you guys know i try to have the most realistic rebuilds on youtube and if i'm being realistic i don't think Jalen brown wants to be with the celtics anymore it's really that simple you can see it in some of his interviews you can see it in his body language it doesn't seem like he wants to be there and with next year being the last year of his deal man i think we have to trade him this offseason or at least to start a next season where we can at least get something back as opposed to just letting him walk in free agency it's a really tough situation because no matter what I trade for, I'm not going to get equal value in return, man. That's what happens when you have no leverage, which in this case, the Boston Celtics definitely would not have any. I'm just going to have to take the L, man, and make the most of it. Try to get as much as I can in return. Hopefully, some players that can help me win right now, maybe even a young piece, and maybe even some draft capital as well. I'm not too sure, but that's really going to be the big thing here with this video is what do I do with Jalen Brown? We'll find that out here in a bit. At the three, we got Jason Tatum, and he's pretty much untouchable. 25 years old. We got him locked up for the next two seasons, player option on the third year he's made the all nba first team each of the last two seasons i mean yeah bro there's no way that I let Jason Tatum walk. As we take a look at the stats here, I mean, these are elite numbers, bro. 30 points per game, nine rebounds, five assists. He had his moments in the postseason where he didn't really deliver, but he's one of those guys that could be off all night and then all of a sudden catch fire just in an instant, which he has done a lot of times when it matters most. But yeah, man, 25 years old, locked up for a few years. He's definitely gonna be the face of our franchise for this entire rebuild. Then in the four, we got Al Horford and he does not really fit the timeline, 36 years old. I respect that he's still knocking down threes. I respect that he's still defending, but he he is 36 years old at the end of the day now fortunately his contract is going to be going down from 26 and a half this season down to a flat 10 for each of the next two years that's really good because I definitely do still want to have him off the bench maybe for like another year or two before he retires I'm not too sure but either way we definitely need to find a new power forward of the future because obviously Al Horford's window is closing at the five we got Robert Williams the third and similar to Jason Tatum man he's pretty much safe for this entire rebuild he's 25 years old on a really really good deal I mean he's barely in the teens for each of the next three seasons man that's as good of a budget as you're going to find and obviously the rim protection is really big as well as you we take a look at his stats here two blocks per game this season really just a rim runner an interior presence not a three-point shooter whatsoever i would like to get a backup center who's able to space the floor a little bit better maybe that's al horford just for next season but long term i definitely want to get something else either way though like i said man time lord is on a really good deal so he's definitely going to be safe for this rebuild off the bench you got a couple really good guards here malcolm brogdon and Derek white brogdon got six man of the year this season putting up some really good numbers he didn't play in game six against the heat because he had a forearm injury i think he only played like seven minutes went over three from the floor or something like that so that's unfortunate because obviously the production that he does give you when he's on the floor and healthy is pretty significant man 15 points off the bench four rebounds four assists shooting that thing ridiculously well this season man 44 percent from deep that's absolutely insane in fact it's a career high for him which is really nice my only concern man is that he's making a lot of money for someone coming off my bench 22 and a half m's for each of the next two seasons at the age of 30 years old where he might start to regress pretty soon i like malcolm brogdon a lot but if i'm trying to make a big move i might need to use him as salary filler i'm not too sure but we'll have to see about that and honestly man i'm a little bit more willing to move on from malcolm brogdon because Derek white to me gives you all the bench production that you would need in your backcourt i mean he was sensational this year 
series, man. Obviously, he forced game seven with that tip in and then was really lighting it up and honestly was like their go to scorer in game seven. He's making less than 20 M's for each of the next two seasons, so that's nice. And he's also 28 years old, two years younger than Brogdon, which isn't much, but still makes a big difference because I don't think he's going to be regressing anytime during this video. But yeah, man, we have two really good guards off the bench. And honestly, I want to keep both of them. But if I am trying to make upgrades to the starting lineup, then one of them probably will have to go. It just is what it is. Then we also got Danilo Gallinari. Now, this was a really sad instance. He actually tore his ACL before the start of the season while playing feeble ball for Italy. And it's really unfortunate because the Celtics don't have a lot of like wing depth. You know, he would have been a really good backup power forward, small forward for them. And also on a really good deal as well. He does have a player option for next season. I'm not sure if he'll accept it. But if he's still asking for around that ballpark, I would like to bring him back and just see what he can do. He's going to be 35 years old, though. He'll probably regress to like a 76. It's not the best. But if we can get this kind of floor spacing from a man, then I think that would be really big. 38% from deep last season with the Hawks and then 40% at least for each of the last three seasons. I really think having a healthy Gallinari would have been a big game changer this season. It's unfortunate that we didn't get to see that, but I am going to try to bring him back for next year. Hopefully he doesn't regress too much. Then we got Grant Williams off the bench, one of those guys who does it all. He's an in-betweener, 6'6", as a power forward center, obviously not the ideal size, but still defends above his height and is also capable of knocking down threes. He shot 40% from deep this season, just about, and then above 40% the year before that. The only question is how much money is he going to ask for because he's 24 years old on an expiring deal. Does he want to go and get a bag somewhere else? There probably is a team that just has money to spend and would give him a deal in like the mid-teens, which we wouldn't be able to match. So hopefully that doesn't happen because I would like to bring him back. But if he gets that bag, man, then it is what it is. We're going to have to let him go. Then we got some guys who are not in our rotation. I'm just going to breeze past them here. The first one is Mike Muscala came over from the Oklahoma City Thunder. And honestly, man, it's kind of like a poor man's Danilo Gallinari. Like he's a power forward. He can space the floor really well. 39% from deep this season, 43% the year before that. He's not as skilled with the ball as Danilo is, but still, if we're not able to bring him back, then Muscala might be like a decent backup option. The only problem is he's 31 years old and he's already a 75 overall, so he might regress. I'm not too sure. I'm not expecting much out of him, but I do think he deserves some respect because he is a pretty underrated player. Then we got Blake Griffin, who is 34 years old, obviously past his prime, not in rotation anymore. There's not really a whole lot to say here, especially because he's on the last year of his deal. We're not going to be bringing him back, most likely. Then we got a couple undrafted guys, Sam Hauser, 25 years old, not expecting a whole lot out of him. We also got Luke Cornett, 27 years old, undrafted. Again, not really a part of our plans. And then we got Peyton Pritchard as well. Now, he's only a three-year pro, but he spent a lot of time at Oregon. So he's already 25 years old. I doubt he's going to progress a whole lot more. And he's had a lot of talks about wanting to get like a bigger bag somewhere else. I don't know where that's going to be, but it's not going to be here. I'll tell you that much. And then to round it out, we got Justin Champagne, an undrafted guy, 21 years old. Not a lot to say here. He's going to have to progress if he wants to carve out a role in the rotation. But I doubt the ceiling's that high, at least in 2K. But anyways, man, that's a look at the rotation. Let's take a look at the three-year game plan now. For year number one, it's very simple. I just want to get the best return I can out of Jalen Brown. Again, it's super unfortunate and I doubt I'm going to get equal value back because I don't have any leverage in this situation, but I'm going to try to make the most of it, man. The goal is still to win a championship right now. So obviously I want to get some guys back in return who can help me do that. Then for season number two, I want to find a long-term point guard and power forward. Right now we got Marcus Smart at the one who's 29 years old. And then we got Al Horford at the four who's what is it like 36, something like that. I forgot, but obviously he's not our long-term power forward. So yeah, man, those are the two things I want to get. Maybe I can even find that in the Jalen Brown trade. That would be ideal. But by year number two, for sure, I really want to have enough pieces around Tatum that really fit his timeline. That's kind of the goal. So they can grow with them and we can keep winning championships. And then for year number three, man, per usual, buy if needed. If we still haven't won a title by then, best believe I'm going to make some more drastic moves, whatever it takes to win that championship. And if we have already won a title by then, then I'm just going to add a couple little rotational pieces to make sure we can keep winning. But yeah, man, that's a look at our three-year game plan. Let's go ahead and send the NBA finals here it's the nuggets and the heat who would have thought it um and it's going to be the nuggets winning it all in five games the Cole Jokic finals mvp shout out to him so we had the 27th pick in the draft but it went to the indiana pacers as a part of that malcolm brogdon trade that's why i skipped the draft anyways let's take a look at our team slash player options here danilo gallinari declined his that's probably for the best i'm sure we can get him back on a smaller deal i'm also going to decline the options here for mike muscala and Peyton pritchard i know i was just saying i like mike muscala but yeah 75 overall it's just not going to work out i'm sorry bro for qualifying offers we are extending one to grant williams hopefully he doesn't get anything bigger than that again if he does we're probably gonna have to let him walk but everybody else i'm cool with not giving 
giving them an offer. So I'm looking for a backup small forward in free agency, and I think Jay Crowder would be a really good fit. We're bringing him back here to the Celtics because uh, he did play here a while back. Yeah, 2016, 2017. Actually spent about two and a half seasons here. The Bucks gave the Suns five second round picks to get him and then barely used them in the playoffs. Well, that's not going to happen this time around, man. We are going to give you minutes, Jay. I promise you that much. It won't be a whole lot, but I think teams are just generally better when they have Jay Crowder. I mean, he's always on a competing team. I think four and a half mil for one year sounds pretty good to me. And it looks like it sounds good to him too. Cool. And we're actually going to sign Danilo on the same deal. Four and a half mil for one year. I think that's pretty fair for him as well. And it looks like he agrees. So luckily we were able to bring back Grant Williams on his qualifying offer. Nobody else gave him a deal. And when you look at the top end of our roster, man, we got a lot of green arrows, which I'll definitely take. Jason Tatum's up two to a 97. That's big for us. Jalen Brown is up one to a 91. Again, we're probably going to have to move on from him. But if anything, this gives him some more trade value. We also got Robert Williams, a third up two to an 85. He's a part of our long-term future. So that's really good. Even Malcolm Brown and up one to an 84 man i'm gonna try my best to keep him and Derek white because that's a really good duo off the bench but again if i'm trying to make a big move one of them is probably gonna have to go for salary filler hopefully we can avoid that though and then we do have some red arrows here just for some of our older guys we got our horford down two to a 78 he can still be a nice backup power forward for us but we definitely need a new starter jay crowder is a 77 overall down one that's totally fine. He'll be a backup small forward for us. And then Danilo Gallinari is down two to a 76. He's probably not going to have a role on this team, but you never know though. It doesn't hurt to have another stretch big. But yeah, man, overall, I feel like we're in a really good spot. We just got to make a few moves beginning with that Jalen Brown trade. Let's go to year number one and see what we can do. All right, man. So here's what I'm thinking. I'm trying to send Jalen Brown to the Atlanta Hawks for DeJounte Murray, DeAndre Hunter, and a lottery protected first round pick in 2024 that belongs to the Sacramento Kings. Now, is this a W trade? Not really. But again, in this situation, man, Jalen Brown has made a clear that he does not want to come back he's on the last year of his deal so we're going to try to send him somewhere where he wants to go and get something in return as opposed to just letting him walk for nothing there's been some reports that he's interested in atlanta and honestly man i think they can give us a pretty good package in return i mean dejounte murray can definitely still help us remain in title contention and the big reason why i want to get him is because of his facilitating man his last year with the spurs he was averaging nine assists obviously that went down with the hawks because he's playing with trey young one of the best passers in the league but still man six assists and only two turnovers that's a three to one assist to turnover ratio i think he'd be able to come into Boston and give some really good facilitating to a team that tends to play a lot of hero ball man there's a lot of isolation not a whole lot of facilitating and I think DeJounte Murray can come in and provide some real structure to that offense and also he can obviously shoot the ball as well he can rebound pretty well for a guard and he still shot about league average from deep last season just a little bit below that the main concern here is that he is on the last year of his deal that's another reason why I think the Hawks would be willing to move on from him I know they gave up three first round picks to get him from the Spurs but clearly it hasn't worked out and if they think they might lose him in free agency for nothing well then definitely including him in a Jalen Brown trade would be more than worth it I think they're fine with that and then we'd also be getting DeAndre Hunter who could be our power forward of the future I mean maybe small forward you could have Jason Tatum play the four it's interchangeable because they're both six foot eight but yeah man 25 years old locked up for the next four seasons he fits the timeline of what we're trying to do and I don't think Atlanta is the best situation for him because right now the Hawks need a third score you know they got Trey Young they got DeJounte Murray the expectation was that John Collins would be that guy but he really struggled this season and DeAndre Hunter ended up having to be that third option which really doesn't suit his game. I mean, he's mostly a defender. He knocks down some threes on occasion. I mean, he shot league average from deep this season, which is nice. But yeah, man, I think asking him to be a third scoring option is just a little too much at this point in his career. He doesn't have to be that with the Celtics. You got Jason Tatum. You're going to have DeJounte Murray in that situation. Then you got guys like Malcolm Brogdon, Derek White, Marcus Smart. Like all of these guys can be third scoring options on any given night. It doesn't always have to be DeAndre Hunter, which is really nice for him. He can just be a really good 3 and D player who fits our timeline. I think that's a really good fit. And then we'd also be getting a lottery protected first round pick from the kings which i do think will convey because the kings should be pretty good this year i feel like overall that's a pretty good package man about as good as we can get right now when again we don't have much leverage in this situation and for the atlanta hawks this trade definitely makes sense for them they're gonna have trey young they're gonna have jalen brown a really good defender who can help pick up the slack for trey young defensively they're also gonna free up a starting small forward spot for aj griffin somebody who showed a lot of promise i think he's definitely ready for that role and then you still got that front court duo of john collins and clint capella i think it's a really nice starting lineup man this trade works out for both teams let's go ahead and see if they will say yes they're saying no um okay i'm willing to give up some seconds here just for 2k purposes i don't think in real life you would have to but let's see if that's enough to get this done they're still saying no come on bro some more seconds here that's all that i can do before i um eventually have to move on from that first and yeah bro that's tough 
I really want to keep that Kings pick, man, because we're giving up Jalen Brown, but it doesn't look like they're budging here. What if I throw in Sam Hauser in these second round picks? We're starting to get a little bit unrealistic here, but it's just for 2K purposes, man. The core of this trade is this right here. That's the real part of it. Let's go ahead and see if this is enough to get it done. And it is finally Jalen Brown, man. Thank you for your service. So that was a lot to unpack. I'm not going to lie, but the end result was definitely worth it. We got Marcus Smart now, DeJounte Murray, Jason Tatum, DeAndre Hunter, and Robert Williams III. I think that's a really good starting lineup, man. And off the bench, we still have Malcolm Brogdon and Derek White. Like I said, I wanted to try my best to keep them, and I think we're going to be able to do that. We still got Al Horford off the bench as well. We got Jay Crowder, and we got Grant Williams. I don't want to get too cocky, man, but I feel like that's the best case scenario if we do have to move on from Jalen Brown. I feel really good about this, man. Let's go ahead and sim this regular season and see how it plays out. Talk to me, but talk to me nice. We went 63 and 19, man, and Jason Tatum, MVP, 30 points, 11 rebounds, 5 assists, 2 steals, 1 block, 50, 40, 90. We round up around here, even though it says 89.6% from the free throw line. Wow, man. I rarely see Jason Tatum get MVP. This is a really good sign. Let's take a look at the rest of these awards here as Malcolm Brogdon also gets sixth man of the year. Yeah, bro. It's wraps for the league. It's GG's, bro. GG's. Joe Missoula, coach of the year. I was thinking about hiring somebody else, but they don't really have all the other firings updated yet. So I couldn't get somebody like Monty Williams, some of the other main candidates. But his job is definitely safe now, that's for sure. As we got a 99 offense and a 98 defense, 99 overall, bro. Wow, yeah. This team is elite, man. I feel really good about this. Jason Tatum, obviously, all NBA first team. Do we have anything else here that concerns us? Let's go ahead and find out. I uh, almost missed it. Robert Williams, the third, all defensive first team. We love to see that. Yes, sir, man. We are hooping right now as we're the top team in the Eastern Conference. Of course, let's go ahead and take a very quick look at the standings. 63 and 19, best record in the league, but actually, Look who's right below us, the Atlanta Hawks, man. Trey Young, Bogdan Bogdanovich, Jalen Brown. They actually put him at the three instead of starting A.J. Griffin. That's a little bit interesting. But yeah, still a really good team. I guess they lost Clint Capella. I'm not too sure. But hey, man, I think this trade worked out for both teams, if you ask me. I really do. As we go ahead and take a look at the stats here, let's go ahead and see who led the way for us. I mean, we know it was Jason Tatum, actually. Why am I even saying that? But DeJounte Murray did his thing, man. 19 points, four rebounds, four assists two steals the assist to turnover ratio is still looking pretty solid and um how do you shoot from deep oh yeah bro above league average and it looks like we had a few guys do that 44 percent from deep for jason tatum is pretty crazy we also got 36 percent for marcus smart that's really nice uh deandre hunter right around league average which i guess is okay malcolm brogdon oh yeah bro we got shooters man we got shooters on this team i feel really good about this squad Let's jump into it here. We're going to be going up against the New York Knicks in the first round. Let's take a look at the matchup here. They got Jalen Brunson, Emmanuel Quickly, RJ Barrett, Julius Randle, and Clint Capella at the five. That's re-ended up, I guess. I don't really know how, but he's there, um, which is very interesting. Let's go ahead and uh, get into this thing, man. We're going to take this game by game per usual. We lose game one. Oh, bro, we're not going to do this. We are not going to do this, 2K. Come on, man. Let's uh let's knock this down to a nine man rotation. We're really down 2-0 to the uh to the New York Knicks, bro. Come on, man. I was gonna say it couldn't be me, but I guess it can be because we're down 2-0 right now. That is so brutal. Um, I do want to keep Brogdon. Actually, man, I know it's unrealistic because he normally comes off the bench, but he's an 85 overall right now, and he's hooping, bro. 23 points, shooting above 50% from deep. Yeah, nah. I'm sorry. He's got to start over Marcus Smart, man. It is what it is. Fight me. I'm sorry. He has to start. So uh, let's go ahead and do that. We're going to actually, they want to bench DeAndre Hunter. Now, that I cannot do. I'm sorry. I cannot do that. Al Horford, you're 79 overall and like, what, 38 years old, bro? uh 37 i'm sorry yeah no i still can't do it though let's go ahead and mess around with this just a little bit more time lord definitely needs to be in the 30 range uh jay crowder we can knock that down just a little bit yeah i feel like that's pretty good let's go ahead and bump this up as well Dejounte needs some more minutes um yeah man i feel like that's pretty good can we get out of this series like please bro as we win that game okay uh two to two now yes sir <sighs> bro I'm just going to simcast, man. I shouldn't have to do anything else here to beat the New York Knicks, bro. Like, come on, man. Not like this, bro. Not like this. Bounce back. There we go. Okay. We're back in it. It's back and forth, but we're going to win. No, we're okay. We are. Oh, man. That was a roller coaster. I didn't know what was going on, but we're here in game seven, man. And we're at the garden. Um, let's go ahead and win this thing, man. Please win this. Do not blow this lead, man. Okay. 
I think we're here and it looks like we are going to get the win. Oh, all right, bro. That was tough, but we made it out. Somehow, some way, we beat the Knicks in seven games, and now we're going up against the Cleveland Cavaliers, which is also going to be tough. They got Darius Garland. They got Donovan Mitchell, Isaac Okoro, Evan Mobley, and Jared Allen. Same starting lineup, but if y'all know 2K, you know that 2K really loves the Cleveland Cavaliers. So I'm a little bit worried here, but we already shortened the rotation. Let's get into this thing as we win game one. Okay, um, one to one. Come on, man. Down two to one. Please tie this thing up. Bro, we're not going to do this, man come on bro let's uh let's i guess we're knocking this thing down to an eight-man rotation Derek white you are our new shooting guard slash small forward bro i guess it is what it is um okay we got some more minutes here we got nine of them things to play with let's go ahead and bump this up just a little bit a little bit more for time lord as well um yeah man i gotta get hunter up to like the 30 range too i feel like this is the best that we can do man can we beat the cleveland cavaliers three games in a row um i don't have high hopes we're just gonna go ahead and i guess simulate it right now and okay we bounce back let's go simcast now two games man that's all that i'm asking for two games against the cleveland cavaliers if we win this one then we get to game seven at home which would be really nice but it's not gonna happen bro it's not gonna happen tough man that's so brutal bro and what's even worse is that the hawks are here with Jalen Brown are they gonna win it all bro if they do that would be pretty funny actually and they did Trey Young gets finals MVP not Jalen Brown but still he got the last laugh man that's tough and what's even more tough is the Kings were bad bro they were number 10 in the draft so they actually retained their pick which is absolutely brutal for us we still have our own pick at 29 but yeah man this isn't going too well right now I'm not gonna act like I know anything about the 2024 class man but this guy Mookie Cook is at the top of our board and he has a really cool name so I think I want to go for him for that reason six foot six shooting guard slash small forward that's actually really nice for us kind of like a Jalen Brown type beat I guess they're saying Donovan Mitchell's his ceiling which is a little bit weird because of the size difference I don't really know but it looks like he's the best prospect available so let's pick him up and I was wrong 69 overall that's another L bro something we've been taking a lot of lately but the one l we cannot afford to take bro is losing to jante murray he's an unrestricted free agent luckily he has no offers he's expecting 33 m's bro i cannot do that we are gonna get a bit of a budget deal here he was making about 17 m's before this so he's still getting a payday but it's not gonna be that much man i'm thinking like 20 probably like 24 would be ideal if we knock this down to a three-year deal um let's go ahead and say i guess 24 and a half I will go ahead and do that. Will he say yes to this? He will. Okay, cool. And we're also going to re-sign Grant Williams to a really nice deal. A little bit under six M's just because I'm petty. It's a three-year deal. He didn't have any other offers, so I guess he's coming back to us. There we go. And now that Gallinari retired, we're looking for a backup power forward. I think Ken Rich Williams would be a really nice fit here. Will he be available in real life? I'm not too sure because I think he's going to be an OKC Thunder lifer. But if the Thunder don't want to sign him, man, then I'm going to pick him up. I'm not going to let him sit here in free agency. So 3.75 per year for two seasons. That sounds pretty good to me. And it sounds like he's cool with it too. So taking a look at player progression, Jason Tatum stays put. He's a 97, so I can't complain. Robert Williams, the third, went up one to an 86. That's nice to see. DeJounte Murray stays put. Same for Malcolm Brogdon, Marcus Smart. I guess that's okay. DeAndre Hunter also went up one to an 82. Jay Crowder did go one and Al Horford went down two. So I'm probably looking for a new backup small forward and a backup center. Those are really the two things I need to do. But other than that, man, I feel like we still have a really good team. Let's head into season two and see if we can finally win a championship. So I know I've traded for him in a lot of my videos, man, but I'm going to try to get Jonas Valanciunas in exchange for Al Horford and a second round pick. They already have their starting center. Or they still have them in Avika Zubac. Val's been coming off the bench. What they really need is a starting power forward because I guess right now that's Stanley Johnson. Al Horford definitely would be an upgrade, albeit an old one, 38 years old, but it is what it is. I'm also going to give them this second round pick, and that's actually the last second round pick that I have because I gave up a lot of them to get Jalen Brown, remember? So hopefully they will say yes to this deal. Let's find out. They're saying no. They want um, Infondu Cabin Jelly, I guess is how you pronounce it. I always mess up his name. They'll give me Ken Birch. I guess that's cool with me, man let's go to make that deal happen and honestly man this is unrealistic but i'm coming back to the clippers it's just too good of a deal to pass up on i want to try to get gordon hayward back on the celtics you know he spent some time here with them as we go ahead and check this thing out he spent what was it three seasons first year he only played the season opener got hurt ended up missing the whole season we need a backup small forward and while it's nothing too crazy i think gordon hayward can give us those minutes and if we can win a championship with him i really think that would be pretty cool we're gonna give them cambridge williams i know i was saying i wanted him on the team but now that i think about it we still have grant williams as our backup 
a power forward. I kind of forgot about that. And then I'm also going to give them Jay Crowder because if I'm getting Gordon Hayward as my backup small forward, I don't need Jay Crowder. So if anything, we're losing this trade because the Clippers are getting a two for one here. But again, I just think it'd be a cool storyline to have Gordon Hayward back on this team. So it's a little unrealistic. I apologize, but I can't pass up on it, man. Let's make that happen. Gordon Hayward, welcome back to Boston. And that's the team, man. It's the same starting lineup. Marcus Smart, DeJounte Murray, Jason Tatum, DeAndre Hunter, and Robert Williams III. Off the bench, we still got Malcolm Brogdon. We got Derek White. But now we got Jonas Valanciunas as our backup five, somebody who can space the floor. I think that's really nice. Pretty much just an improved version of what Al Horford is now at his age. Then we also got Grant Williams and we got Gordon Hayward rounding out the 10-man rotation. I think it's a good team once again, man. Can we finally win this championship, though? Let's go ahead and find out, man. We're going to sim this regular season and see what it's looking like. So we went 65 and 17 and once again Jason Tatum MVP bro 32 points 10 rebounds 5 assists 1 steal 1 block 50 40 and I can't say 90 this time around 88% bro I'm sorry JT I can't do it my boy you should have made a couple more free throws but either way back-to-back -back MVPs is pretty crazy for him you don't see that too often I guess he really is benefiting from Jalen Brown being gone anyways let's go ahead and keep this thing moving here as uh we don't have anything else that concerns us we didn't get coach of the year that's a little surprising Quinn Snyder and the Hawks bro speaking of Jalen Brown they went 64 and 18 that's a dangerous team man. and actually I don't know if Jalen Brown's still there or not because he was a free agent last offseason so we'll find that out here in a bit but yeah Jason Tatum all NBA first team leading the way we need you to lead the way in the playoffs man but anyways Jalen Brown is here on the Hawks still 92 overall actually higher than Trey Young so this is his team I guess and they're only one game worse than us bro yeah that's a uh that's a really good team I'm a little bit worried but uh we'll see if we end up matching up against them because we didn't last year Jason Tatum led the way you guys already saw his stats but DeJounte Murray 24 and 4 the assist count is a little bit down Malcolm Brogdon hasn't picking that up so that's nice uh, what about Val man what did he do nine and seven off the bench and shooting below league average from deep Val I was really hoping to be above league average from deep man but oh well anyways let's go ahead and get into this thing man we're going to be going up against the Orlando Magic in the first round let's go ahead and see who they have on the squad they got Scoot Henderson um with the sixth pick in the draft that's pretty wild I just simmed the draft because I didn't have a pick that year but I guess they got Scoot, which is interesting. So they also have Kelly Oubre. They got Franz Wagner, Paolo Bancaro, and Nikola Vucevic back in Orlando, which actually you see a lot of in these Sims. It's a little bit weird. Anyways, we win game one here. We should beat them pretty easily. Um, but you never know. The Knicks pushed us to seven last year. Okay, we're up three to one. Let's close this thing out. <sighs> Come on, man. No game seven. There we go. All righty, bro. We're going up against the Toronto Raptors in the second round. Who do they have on the squad? They got Taylor Horton Tucker. They got Ogian Anobi, Scotty Barnes, Pascal Siakam, and Jakob Pertl. All right. It's a pretty good team, man, but we most certainly are better as we lose game one. Okay, way to bounce back, boys. Please don't go down 3-1, bro. There we go. 2-2, two to two, and actually, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to shorten the rotation, bro. I don't want to risk it um, because, yeah, I don't want to go down 3-2. to two. I guess they really want to start Malcolm Brogdon, man. I mean, he is absolutely hooping, bro. I know he's a six man, and I know that's the role that he has. But, like, come on, man. I'm going to start him over Marcus Smart. It is what it is, my boy. Um, what are we going to do here? I guess we're giving the nod to Grant Williams instead of Gordon Hayward. That's fine by me. Let's go ahead and mess around with these minutes just a little bit here. Uh, Val doesn't need that many, even though he is on fire. Same for Grant Williams. Uh, that gives us a little bit more. Let's go ahead and bump this up for DeJounte, actually. For sure need to do that. And DeAndre Hunter, bro, getting no love in Sim, which is pretty crazy. Um, what can I do here for him, though? That's the tough part. I'll bump Marcus Smart down just a little bit and give some more like that. Yeah, man, I think I think that's about right. All righty, let's go ahead and get into this thing. Can we go up 3-2 here? We can. Can we close it out now? There we go. Okay. Going up against the Cleveland Cavaliers, revenge series, man. Same team. We can skip all of that. Let's get into this thing. Can we beat them? We're going to find out now as we win game one. Okay. We win game two. Uh, two to one. That's fine. Three to one. Oh, yeah. Ah, come on, man. Please no game seven. There we go. We're here in the finals, man. First time in. What is it now? I'm trying to think because we're two years into the future. First time in three years? I think. I'm not sure. Either way, we're going up against the Dallas Mavericks. They still got Luka Doncic and Kyrie Irving. They also got Ron Holland um, and Jalen Smith and Christian Wood. Okay. We should be able to beat these boys pretty easily, man. They were actually the five seed, so shout out to them. But uh, yeah, we should win this. So we win game one here. We win game two. Come on, bro. Two to one. Okay. 
Uh, there we go. I was going to get a little bit worried, but there we go, man. The Boston Celtics have finally won a championship. It took two seasons, but we got it done, and Jason Tatum led the way. I said he needed to, and he definitely did. 34 points, 11 rebounds, 8 assists, shot 47% from deep. We round up around here. Let's go, Jason. That's what I'm talking about, man. So mission accomplished. We have won a championship, but we do have one more season. Let's try to go back to back, man. Let's get into it. So I'm a little bit confused, man, because apparently we got the 12th overall pick in this upcoming draft from the Sacramento Kings. I know that's not the one we got in the Jalen Brown trade because that was for 2024 and it was also lottery protected. So either way, we wouldn't be getting it. I'm looking around and I can't see the Celtics having this pick on any of these websites. Celtics fans, you guys can let me know if this is actually your pick or not, but we already won our championship. It's not that serious anymore. I'm going to give this pick back to the Kings just in case I'll make that trade off camera. I just want to play it safe. And like I said, we don't really need it. So it's all good. So I'm a little bit worried, man. Jason Tatum has declined his player option. Hopefully it's just because he wants to get a bigger bag than us i understand that's definitely reasonable i mean he won back-to-back -back mvps and finals mvp but i'm really hoping he doesn't want to go anywhere else man let's go ahead and find out in free agency what he's thinking so tatum has 13 offers he's expecting 46.68 m's bro um okay there we go luckily he doesn't have anything that crazy i mean he's got a 33 million dollar deal from the pistons we can definitely match that man i feel a lot better about that let's go ahead and um we're gonna we're gonna save a little bit of money bro i'm sorry I got to do it, my boy. I know you just want backs back MVPs, all that stuff, uh, finals MVP, but yeah, I got to save a little money, you feel me? So we're going to do about 37.5, which I think is right around what he was getting paid earlier, wasn't it? I'm not too sure. Either way, though, it looks like we're bringing him back, right? Um, yeah, there we are. Okay, cool. We also got to bring back Malcolm Brogdon. Let's go ahead and try to save some more money here, um, especially if we're paying Jason Tatum, man. I'm going to knock this down to like a two-year deal just so I can save a little bit more money. Hey, bro. We got to make this dollar stretch as best as we can here. Let's knock this down to two. Yep. Video is going to be over by then. So that's totally fine. Uh, yeah, we're going to get this to like a 14. Actually, can we do 13.99 just because I'm petty? Will he say yes to this deal? And he will. Cool. And you got to love Derek White, bro. He understands the assignment. He's only asking for 4.99 per year for two seasons. I can definitely do that. That's a steal, man. So we ended up bringing everybody back and everyone's pretty much staying the same. Grant Williams went up one to a 78. That's nice. We did have a little bit of regression here. Val went down by two and Gordon Hayward went down by one. It is what it is, man. We're probably still good with Val as our backup center. I'm not sure about Gordon Hayward as our backup three. My cutoff tends to be like 77 overall for any of my rotational players. I'm going to look around, see if there's any upgrades, but if not, we already won our championship. I'd be cool with just running the same team back and seeing how they do. Either way though, let's end in the season three and see if we can go back to back. And you know what? I think I am good with the man just because I really do want to try to win another title with Gordon Hayward. It feels wrong to bring him onto the team for one year and then trade him away. So we are going to keep him around, man, as our backup small forward. I mean, not like we really need that many minutes for that. We got Jason Tatum, who obviously he plays most of the game and we still got deandre hunter as well so i think we're totally fine anyways man let's go ahead and send this regular season and see how it plays out All right, man, so we went 58 and 24, not as good as the past two seasons, but still, I think, pretty solid. LaMelo Ball gets MVP. Does any of this here concern us? Um, let's go ahead and see. Does not look like it. What about uh, the All-NBA teams? Tatum's there on All-NBA second team. I guess we'll take that. And uh, what else do we got? Not much else. Nothing else. All right, cool. Let's go ahead and keep this thing moving, man. Last year, last playoff run, we are the number two seed this time around. I'm guessing the Hawks were the best team. Yeah, man. Hey, it worked out for them at the end of the day. They won a championship. We won a championship. And um, it looks like they're competing once again. Jalen Brown at the three, still doing his thing. Uh, shout out to him, I guess. Anyways, let's go ahead and take a look at the stats here and just see what that's looking like. Tatum, I mean, still filthy numbers, bro. 30 points, 11 rebounds, six assists, two steals, one block. Yeah, man, doing his thing and still knocking them threes down. DeJounte Murray, 39% from deep. Oh, yeah, bro. We got so many shooters on this team. DeAndre Hunter at 40% is a really nice development he's an 83 overall they didn't really progress a whole lot but that's what i was talking about earlier man he doesn't have to be like a proven third scorer on this team i mean we got malcolm brogdon and then we also have like Derek white on any given night who could do his thing i feel like it was a really good fit for him but anyways let's go ahead and keep this thing going as we're going up against the toronto raptors in the first round they got cole anthony og ananobi scotty barnes pascal siakam and yaka Pertle. Alrighty, man let's go ahead and take this game by game here as you win game one, okay. You win game two, yes, sir. Two to one, okay. Let's go up three one. There we go. All right, can we close this thing out, gentlemen? Sweet man, there we go. We're going up against the Orlando Magic. Who do they have on the squad? 
yeah, they still got Scoot Henderson. I forgot about that. They also got Gary Trent Jr., Franz Wagner, Paolo Bancaro, and Wendell Carter Jr. That's a really good team, man. Um, I still think we're better, question mark, as we win game one there. Two to nothing, okay. Oh, um, yeah, okay, I guess it was pretty easy. All right, there's the series that I've been wanting, man. The Atlanta Hawks versus the Boston Celtics. Jason Tatum versus Jalen Brown. I was starting to think it wouldn't happen this video, man, but let's get it. I'm excited. All righty, let's go ahead and get into this thing as uh, we win game one. Okay, it's really cool that they're guarding each other, too. All right, we're up two to one here. Two to two, it's back and forth. Oh, man, come on, bro. We can't lose this thing, man. I should have shortened the rotation earlier. Um, also, I should be starting Malcolm Brogdon. I forget about that every time. Yeah, man, he's really that boy. All right, we got to bench Gordon Hayward. That's fine. Um, let's go ahead and knock these minutes down as well. Yeah, we don't need that many for Grant Williams. Um, let's go ahead and give some more minutes, I guess, to um, what can we do here? Brogdon needs to go up. Murray needs to go up. Uh, probably Robert Williams III. And DeAndre Hunter needs a little bit more, man. I'm not going to lie. Just a little bit more. All right, there we go. Yeah, I think that's pretty much fine to me. Let's see if we can force a game seven here against uh, Jalen Brown. Come on, man. Please, let's win this thing. We are in Boston, man. We can't lose a Jalen Brown in Boston. That would be embarrassing. And it's looking like it's going to happen. Tough, bro. Tough. Jalen Brown has gotten his revenge. What did he average that series, bro? Or like just the playoff run in general. I got to find out. Um, not like it really matters, though. 29 points in a closeout game is pretty solid um let's go ahead and take a look at these stats here he's averaging 28 5 and 5 in the playoffs which is um, a step up from the regular season hey man just got to tip your cap to him he did his thing you know he wanted to go somewhere where he could be the guy he's pretty much that in atlanta i think um as they win a championship and he doesn't get finals mvp it's trey young but still man that's pretty cool he got two championships we got one i can't be mad at him man if you guys enjoyed this video please do leave a like and subscribe again we just hit a thousand subs on this channel now i'm starting the road to 2k subs if you guys could help me out with that i would really appreciate it anyways though this has been 2kj blessings